Firstly, can I thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. We have put this recording together for those parents that were unable to attend the Parent Information Evening, which launched our Project August 24 um, first session in October 2023. My name is Mr Tomlinson. I am the Deputy Head Teacher. I will be doing the voiceover for this whole presentation. I'll be giving you a condensed um, set of information really around what was shared in the evening, just to give you um, a gist of everything that you need to know that was shared on the night itself. So during this session, I'm going to introduce the Project 824. I'm going to talk you through what support we have in school around careers and aspirations. I'm going to talk through why revision is so important, how to revise. We're going to talk through revision timetables and specifications and how parents can support their children. So the reason why we're launching Project 824 is about trying to create a link between pupils' academic success, the support we give them here in school and the support that you give them as parents. When we conducted a number of parent and pupil surveys and student voice activities last year, lots of the feedback we had was around readiness for exams and supporting our pupils to really do their best when it came to those summer public exam papers. Project 824 is really about giving pupils and parents the information and the support services in place throughout the academic year to make sure that they've got everything that they need to succeed. So for pupils, that's going to look like a series of in-school assemblies. We're going to buy in some external speakers. We're going to have some students um, speak to them as well about how they've revised and best prepared for their exams. We are also buying in external experts. We're having sessions in such as Elevate targeted at certain year 11s and year 13s. We obviously have these parent information evenings. So for everyone that we run in school time, we will provide an online recorded one for those parents that obviously can't attend. And really everything that we're sharing in these sessions is about practical tips. We're sharing things, we're sharing resources and practical ways to revise so that students can best prepare themselves, find what works for them and really do their best when it comes to those public exam papers. So as part of this project, we have bought every single student in year 11 and every single student in year 13 a copy of their you know, key stage relevant how to revise workbook. These Tim Foot published books are excellent. They've got revision timetables in them. They've got loads of practical tips around how to revise, how to prepare, how to manage stress and workload. There is also for GCSE parents a parent guide as well and we gave those out on the first evening. So for any parents that didn't manage to come along to the first parent information evening, we will bring a box down again for the second evening evening for anyone that didn't get a copy. These contain for parents the real practical tips about what you can do to best support your child up to those summer exams, how you can support their workload, how you can prioritise the revision with them, how you can test and check their knowledge and how you can support their well-being and their workload and make sure that they are really in the best place possible to succeed. In addition to this, we provided a copy of this. This is a breakdown of everything that's in place for either year 11s or year 13s between October and May when the public exam season opens. Now, what I've tried to do in this document is include a really clear list of dates that are coming up of all the most important things. So you can obviously the first session that we did was on the 5th of October. Year 13 parents evening was on the 10th. Then we're moving into things like the mock starting. We've got careers fairs in place. Um, the dates are on there for when we're going to send you the mock results as well. So you can see how your children have done in terms of their mock exam results. For the next section of the sheet, we've also got, you know, the second session. So our second session, which we'd like you to attend again, we'll do a virtual one, which will be on the 24th of January. That one is going to be about now you've got your mocks. Now you've got your papers back. How do you improve? How do you get a better grade? We'll then have a new set of Twilight interventions launched. We'll have Year 11's Parents' Evening starting as well on the 30th of January. That Year 11 Parents' Evening then is really important because staff will have those mock grades and have those mock results. They'll talk to you about the tierage of papers in maths and in science and in languages. And it's really that last opportunity to have those conversations with staff around what support is needed, what revision is needed, how they can best prepare and improve for those summer um, real papers. Then in February, we'll have some interventions starting at half term for targeted and selected pupils. We will then have um, mocks again. So we'll have a very small one week series of mock papers in uh, February. It's on the 26th of February 2024. That season of mocks, though, will contain only four sets of papers. So there will be a formal mock for English, maths, science 
and for languages. Now the mocks for maths, science and languages will be for tierage. So these mocks are absolutely crucial. These are determining whether your child will be set either foundation or higher tierage for their papers, which will obviously determine what grades they can potentially reach. We will also have three drop down days as well. So those drop down days will be in their option subjects. This will give them an opportunity um, to work with their option teachers the entire day, either doing walking, talking mocks, completing non-examined assessment work, taking part in some revision for the day. Um, it, whatever they're doing, it'll be subject based and it will be about preparing them for those summer exams. In March, we'll then have some Easter interventions. We'll have our third and final parent session on the 11th of April. That will be Asia exams. Again, this will be another in the theatre um, evening. We will do a record as well, but this is the last chance for us to get together. And this will be the practical tips around how they can best prepare for the exam season, how they can best revise during and obviously before those public exams. But there'll also be lots of practical hints and tips around workload, well-being, managing stress levels, coping with what's coming up in terms of that very condensed four week period. Um, we'll also then have obviously the public exam starting in May. So our support for you, um, we have obviously provided the students with their revision guides, parents, if you haven't got a copy, please come along to the next evening and we'll provide you with um, a copy of the parent guide. On the evening itself, you would have heard from Mrs Cheshire, our careers advisor, and she was talking through the wide variety of post-16 options available to your children. During this, she gave a year of and careers interview and she was talking about how we run the careers fair and what was on offer there, about how we've booked in spotlight talks and how we've got careers clinics, how we've got weekly and bi-weekly tutor activities around careers and how we're sharing the regular news updates, the opportunities on offer. She was also talking about when to submit college applications and the deadlines. And if you're not sure on these, I do advise you get in contact with her. She can offer you that bespoke support around college and apprenticeship applications. She's also been talking about weekly apprenticeship updates and also about the one to one careers appointments that she's offered um, to pupils, either targeted or when they've asked for them. She then also talked about what to do next and the deadlines are due advise you to spend some time having a look at this slide. I'm not going to talk significantly over it, but it gives you a breakdown of what to do if your planned route involves either sixth form here, apprenticeships, further education colleges, or if you're thinking of studying something like T-levels. So I suggest at this moment in time, you pause the video and just take some time to read the information on the slides. She also provides some further information around all the different schools in the city, where you can get information about apprenticeships, different progression routes, and the different colleges that are on offer. Also about applications, about making sure that you've got your place sorted before you get to results day. Mrs Cheshire also shared her contact details. That is her email address shown on this slide. She is more than happy to support any parent or any pupil with helping to find the best career options, the best further education or sixth form options for your child. The next section we're coming on to is the real crux of the evening. So it's about why to revise and how to revise. So 66% of material is forgotten after seven days, with 88% of material being forgotten after six weeks. This is known as the forgetting curve. Reading notes and textbooks leads to a mere 10% retention. A lot of people put too much focus on just reading and not the doing side. And really revision is most effective when you actually do something with it. So firstly, what are the benefits of revision? Benefits include recall of the details of the topic that you've studied. You gain more confidence in those topics, especially when you attempt those exam questions. That timely revision helps students reduce their anxiety and their stress levels. And that's what the whole purpose of this project is. Revision helps them feel well prepared for the exams, but it also helps them gauge the strengths and the areas of development in a particular topic or subject and helps them prioritise their time for revision. The big important statistic from this forgetting curve is, did you know that you forget 80% of what you learn in the first 24 hours? And this is why cramming doesn't work. GCSE pod produced this slide and the whole idea behind it, whether you're an A-level or GCSE student, is lots of repetition of a topic going back over things regularly helps turn that short-term memory of a topic or knowledge into something of a long-term memory 
And the way to think about this, your short term memory is a bit like the RAM in your computer. It is limited to the amount it can hold. The long term memory is like Google Drive. It's like an unlimited level of data storage. If you can get information into your long term memory, and the most effective way is that repetition and going back over it and practicing things. If you can get it into your long term memory, you won't forget it because it's there stored. You just need to find ways of accessing it. But repetition is the most important way. Reviewing your work, going back over it, reattempting questions is the most effective way of getting that information into long term memory. So revision allows students to reinforce and embed school learning. It allows them to identify what they do and they don't know, make links with other knowledge and other subject matters. It allows them to practice that application of knowledge under exam conditions. And it also allows them to gain confidence. It is not cramming and it's not rereading, highlighting and copying. How to revise. More important than just revision, make sure students, before they go into those exams, eat breakfast, have their phones away, or even when they're doing this revision, get fresh air and exercise and they get sleep. But be organised. Sit at a desk or a table somewhere designed for study. Think about what time of the day you are most alert and work then. Make tasks specific and realistic. And that realistic bit is really important. Make sure you're not trying to revise an entire subject in one go. Break it up, chunk it, plan your time. Use those revision timetables that we've given you. Review, recap and retain that knowledge and think about the most effective ways that are going to work for you. Now, this slide gives you lots of practical hints and tips of what activities that support revision might look like. And this is going to vary vastly between subject and also whatever it is that you're trying to revise and recreate when you come to those exams. My maps I find really effective, especially when I'm trying to recap and make links between different topics and areas of knowledge. Keyword post-its, these are really good. I mean, obviously, you can upset your parents doing this, but I used to use them very much by sticking on the inside of cupboard doors and using those to, to keep recapping words, formulas, key things that I've got to remember before I sit that paper. Flashcards, you know, writing out really useful flashcards that you can just switch between. You can use those flashcards with questions. You can use them with little mini mind maps. You can use them with definitions, but you can use flashcards to test yourself, to test your peers, or to get parents to test you on topics and check that recall. That's really helpful as a way of keep repeating um, that knowledge over time if you're using those little flashcards, because it's a really quick, easy, repetitive way of making sure you're regularly reviewing and recapping the knowledge that you've covered in class. Get your friends and family to use those flashcards to test you. Try blurting. Blurting involves choosing a topic to revise, writing down everything that you can remember about it from memory in a textbook and then comparing it either to the textbook, the study materials, the notes that you've taken to check what the areas that you need to repeat and put more practice into. Thing that works for me best is try exam questions and mark schemes. Choose a topic, choose an exam paper and a mark scheme, have a go at that question, self mark, peer assess, ask your teachers to look at it, they'll be more than happy to. Write your own questions as well, use your online learning material, really good for recapping knowledge like GCSE Pod and Seneca, um, but also get to know the IT resources or any resources that are best for your subject. And the best way to do that is talk to your teaching staff. Sir, Miss, how do I revise for this subject? What are the best things that I can do? I promise you the staff have been at this for years. They've always got practical advice and tips around what the best things are that you can do. Procrastination. Anything is better than nothing. Don't spend too much time planning what you will do and not actually doing it. If you know your time management is a problem and you struggle with motivation, OK, Plan yourselves to work for 25 minute blocks with five minute breaks in between. Now, these breaks, what I find work for me when I was doing my final year exams at university is make sure those breaks are something active. Go for a walk around your garden, go out with a dog around the block, do something that is active. Don't go and watch telly, listen to music for five minutes. Give yourself and your brain something enjoyable as a break that you can look forward to once you've done your 25 minutes of study. Also, chunk and make sure whatever it is you're doing in that 25 minutes has the most amount of impact. Be really clear. I'm going to read this. I'm going to cover this and I'm going to do this. 
So this stage, we need to think about why mocks matter and why they're good for you. This is a really useful slide for you to sit down with your child and go through and think about all the different things that help you around mocks. Again, I've paused at this point, have a read through, discuss through why the mocks are an important part of this experience. Revision timetables in the little books that we provided you with, there is a little revision timetable, a simple one that you can just fill out as it is or photocopy from. Um, it's important to look at your specs, look at your exams, split each subject up and then prioritise which topics that you don't know as well or that you did last and make sure you're revising those as first priority and then split up and plan your intervention as lots of time chunks. You know, maybe with a little bit of reading, then a bit of doing using some past questions, then a bit of assessment checking that you know it, but make sure you build in break times in these, little things that you can do that will split up the time. Vision timetables again, if you, you've got the ones in the little uh, Tim Foot books, but you've also got uh, revision timetables that are downloadable online. One of the best ones is the GCSE pod one. It's a Word document you can edit yourself. Um, you know, plan the topics you need to prioritise. Stick to short, sharp chunks of revision. Plan 30 to 45 minutes of time. Plan in your rest breaks and then focus on recap and application of those assessments. For those that are GCSE students, this doesn't apply to year 13, unfortunately, but for those of in year 11, we have invested in a service called GCSE Pod. So you go to GCSEpod.com, you type, you will go straight to sign in with Office 365, which is the orange button with a blue circle around it in the bottom right hand side. When you access this website, it is split up into um, different areas, but if they go on to learn, it will be for them than teach they'll be able to find each subject so each subject will be shown as a tile they'll be able to find that they'll be able to choose the subject and then they'll be able to select an area of that exam board specific specification to watch a series of short pods now the pods are anything between three to sort of six minutes long they have an expert there sharing talking through a topic recapping knowledge there is also check and challenge on a lot of the pods, which is the purple circle shown on the right hand side. The check and challenge facility will give students lots of multiple choice questions, which will probe their understanding of that subject matter. And it will suggest pods that are linked to what students don't know. So it won't suggest things that students have got right and they do know, but the GCSE pod facility with check and challenge will suggest things that they need to go back and watch again in order to improve their knowledge. The check and challenge looks like this. These are the sorts of multiple choices that you get. And like I said, at the end of it, students can choose then to watch a couple more pods that will help them recap the areas they haven't done so well in this assessment. If a student is ever coming home to you saying, I haven't got any homework tonight, I haven't got any revision material tonight, spending an hour on GCSE pod doing some of these pod revisions for a subject that you know, let's say, they're lower in their predicted grades than their targets would be really worth them spending their time at. This slide is specific for year 13. It talks about how they're studying three subjects per week and how they should really be doing five hours of study outside of that, that subject in order to make sure they achieve their target grades. So you have 15 hours of lessons per week. That leaves plenty of time outside of that through private study in school or when you're at home. And what you should really be doing is maybe doing some reading, maybe you know recapping a topic, doing some revision, having go up some practice questions and completing any homework that is set by your subject teachers. Do make use, whether you're GCSE or A-level, make use of exam specifications. Exam specifications are all linked on the website. So if you go to um, curriculum on, our, on the Blue Coat website, if you go to curriculum and then you go to subjects, the top there are four little hyperlinked boxes which contain the exam specs for year 10, 11, 12 and 13. Those specifications contain the lists of topics that students are going to have to cover for every single exam. So what that does, it tells them, really gives them a list that they can rag rate. So you can go red, amber, green, how well that they understand or know that topic or knowledge. This also gives you the nuances of the spec. And by nuances, I mean the smaller parts of the spec, which might not be covered in sufficient detail in the actual textbooks, which means that they can target those smaller things that may come up as a question, which could be the difference between a grade. We also had during the evening 
two students in year 12 talk about how they revised for their year 11 GCSE exams and they shared lots of practical hints and tips. There are a few on this slide. Again, take the time to read this slide. There's some really useful information here. So pause at this point, have a read of the information and we'll move on. So how can parents support their children? So we're coming to the end of the evening now, but I wanted to just share with you some practical tips. First one, manage their screen time. When they are supposed to be doing revision at home, I would suggest find somewhere in the home that their phone, tablet, whatever the devices that are usually used of an evening goes. So it's out their way when they're doing revision, unless obviously they're using that device for GCSE pod access or something like that, but manage that screen time. Make sure they have an effective study space. Find somewhere in your home that would act as a quiet study space where they can work undisturbed from their other family members and just get on and get some work done and sit with them, plan out that revision timetable, plan out the times in their day based on their extracurricular activities, based on whatever it is they do outside of school, which is still important that it continues, but plan that time effectively to ensure they prioritise where they spend their time best and it's realistic as well and support them in doing that. In terms of sleep, one of the things that students typically do wrong, and it's a very, very common issue, especially with sixth form, is not getting enough sleep at night. They really do try to cram before their mocks and their exams, and it doesn't work. They'll work till you know one or two in the morning, thinking that that's going to be effective for them to pass the exam the next day, but it really isn't. The most effective things that they can do before that exam is do some revision the night before, get a little bit of rest, get to sleep early, making sure they get a good night's sleep, and making sure that they have breakfast each day. If they haven't had breakfast in the day when they're coming in for the mocks of the exams, we always put breakfast provision on in G6, which is the food room down in the bottom of Gorton. Students also need to make sure that they've got your support around monitoring them too. You need to support them by checking that they are doing the revision, checking they are doing when they've said and they're sticking to that timetable, okay? The final thing I want to share with you, we have built a new section of the website. So if you go to curriculum and you go to project 824, we have built a revision tips for students page, a revision tips for parents page. And we've also begun to put specific resources in for each year group. Also linked off from that, we've also got subject specific revision lists for every single subject at 11 and 13. And these are being developed over time, so they will start to be fully populated. But what heads of department and heads of subjects have done for you here is they prioritise a list of topics that they feel sequence wise is the best pattern in which to revise. This is not personalised to you and what you do and don't know, obviously, but this gives you, OK, so in business studies, I should be doing these three topics, autumn one. Then in autumn two, I should be doing these three topics. And in spring, I should be doing these. The reason why the heads of department have done this, they've been looking at what's the most effective sequence of topics to revise. It might be the ones you did right back in year 10 or year 12 that were the ones that you haven't done in a very long time that they're asking for you to do now. Or it might be that they're tying in those revision topics with what you did the half term or the term before. But whatever it is, I'd use that as your first port of call alongside your spec when you're planning your revision timetable. We have two more sessions planned. We have session two on Wednesday, the 24th of January. That will be about learning from the mocks and moving forward. Session three will be on Thursday, the 11th of April, and that will all be about how to ace your exams. Thank you for taking your time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate you taking your time to stay with this. Um, we will be obviously offering those other evenings physically on site, but I will prepare at a later date a recorded one like this for anyone that is unable to attend. Thank you.